Well, the Reds and Brewers were cut short by Mother Nature, so the Brewers end up taking their first series with the Reds, two games to one. We got Chuck Freeman in here. I'm Jeff Carr. We are Locked On Brewers and Locked On Reds. We're going to cross over, give you a bit of a series recap here uh, on both the Locked On Reds and Locked On Brewers feeds. Thank you so much for making us part of your day. Both Locked On Brewers and Locked On Reds are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every single day. And as avid fans, as rabid fans of both of our teams and knowledgeable about both of them, we know what recent history has been for this series. Recent history has quietly favored uh, the the Brewers. Um, and it's not even quietly. It's very loudly. Uh, very loudly favored the Brewers and didn't really change a whole lot. The first game was very interesting. So, some shenanigans really tilted it in the Reds' favor. Game two and game three looked a lot more like what we saw in the 2023 season as the Reds only got one win at home against the Brewers in 2023. They got one win now against the Brewers in 2024, but uh, still just the one win. Chuck, uh, as, as you look at this series, what is the first thing that sticks out to you, the first meeting of our two division rivals? Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, on the betting line, the Reds are favored. We're favored in every game of this series. Even today, the rainout game. Uh, I looked at last night and... Uh, Peralta was a, a slight underdog. So the Reds have been favored in all these games and, and the Brewers always seem to be underdogs going to Cincinnati. But as you mentioned, Brewers seem to have some success. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I honestly thought when they were down eight, nothing, it was game set match on Monday. And that's, and that, and that one was over and, you know, past Brewer teams, a, a game like that. Well, then, you know, the rest of the series, they're left for dead, but they came back. I'm surprised that they've come back and they won Tuesday and Wednesday handily in both of those games. And I guess my biggest takeaway of this, Jeff, is the fact that the Brewers have scored seven runs in seven or more runs in the last four games for an offense that has been quiet for the most part in the last several years. So I would say offensively, uh, but yeah, I, I, you look at everybody in the division and everybody's doing well, but as we always say, you know, there's 11 games in the season. We, we got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, and it was something that watching this series and honestly watching for the better part of the last decade, Reds Brewers, um, I'm ready for the Reds to stop pitching to Christian Yelich. In fact, Steve and I have adopted the position that uh, the Lockdown Reds podcast would like to advocate for the Reds to stop pitching to Christian Yelich because it seems like if there's anything and it doesn't even have to be in the strike zone. If it's near the strike zone, Christian Yelich just clobbers it. And I don't care if it's from if it's from Graham Ashcraft, if it's from Frankie Montas, if it's from Hunter Green, if it's from one of the relief pitchers, like he's he's hitting everybody. It doesn't seem to matter. The the C on the Reds uniform just seems to enliven him in in, in some way. He goes crazy, uh, especially at Grand American Ballpark. His career stats. Uh, against the Reds are just phenomenal. And he's, he's been a good player his entire career, but uh, he turns into otherworldly good <laughs> whenever he sees a Reds pitcher. Uh, so I definitely want to see them stop doing there. I think from the Reds side of this though, like my, my biggest concern, and I think a lot of folks biggest concern coming into the season is what would they get out of the starting pitching staff? You know, you only add Frankie Montas. You do get some guys back from, from injuries and things like that from last year, you know, Hunter Green missed some time, Graham Ashcraft missed some time, all those guys. What what do they look like whenever they go back up against their division foe? This was kind of more of the same. Nobody was really standing out. There was there was not a performance where I was just like, man, they really gave themselves a good chance to win. I mean, Frankie Montes in game one really did the best job of doing that. But then even, or I'm sorry, Graham Ashcraft, I, I get them too mixed up. Uh, but then even Graham Ashcraft kind of blew up in, in the fifth and sixth inning. That was something that was a little bit crazy to me just because of the way that the fourth inning went mm -hmm. with all of the guys coming to the plate. And that was, that was kind of a thing that overall I'm like, man, this, this reds bullpen, they added to it a lot this off season. They were pretty talented last year kind of feels like David Bell, I get it. The the managerial confidence you show in your starters, maybe you you have a little bit of a quicker hook because it seemed like whenever Stuart Fairchild robbed that home run, which was an amazing play, 
that was the point where I'm like, all right, Graham Ashcraft has nothing else. That was the game tying home run right there that Stuart Fairchild saved for him. That was nothing, you know, it's time to pull him, left him in. And, and then the Brewers or you know, that was ultimately the difference in the game, that home run that wouldn't have tied the game at the time. But it was just, it was crazy to see how the pitching just didn't really seem to be much different in these three games. We should make a deal. How about if the Brewers set Yelich and you guys set Dela Cruz every time we face each other? Would you take that trade off, Jeff? Because so right Cruz, now I'm not so sure. <laughs> as, I, as I told you boys, like last year and even in the offseason, that guy continues to scare the heck out of me. And, and I texted this quote by Contreras, William Contreras, the Brewers catcher the other day. He said, we can't be afraid of this guy. We got we got to stop, you know, look it up and, you know, hero worshiping this guy, kind of like players did with Michael Jordan back in the 90s. Um, you know, he, he basically said, hey, we got good players on this team, but we got to have, he said, <laughs> it was funny to hear him say this. He's, we have to have a serious talk amongst ourselves here on how we're going <laughs> to deal with this guy. I've never heard a player <laughs> say that before. So, but nothing's worked because Elliot Cruz continues to be great. Now, one thing about the Reds is every time, I see you guys play against anybody else. Um, you know, I, I watched the game Friday night against the Mets, and um, you know that wasn't so good. But uh, but every time I think I, I I watch you guys last year, this year I go, oh man, boy are they good? And then you guys have ended up playing us, and you can't get it, you can't <laughs> get out of your own way. Where's yeah. this team that I always? Where's this team I see on the MLB package for ninety percent of the time? <laughs> where are those guys? <laughs> That was something, too, that I wanted to talk to you about because we, we always joked, and I don't even know that it was a joke at some point, I think at some point we just started getting mad, that in years past, especially in the early 2010s, it felt like the Cardinals had some sort of devil magic when it came to the Reds. Mm -hmm. Now I think the Brewers have stolen it from them because every time, like, the the the, the third inning of Frankie Montas' start, uh, that that the Brewers ended up just blowing the, the scoreboard wide open, it was... Two strikes, hit. Two mm -hmm. strikes, work a walk. Two strikes, hit. Two strikes, double, RB, uh, you know, two RBIs. I was like, he is one pitch away from getting out of this inning. And the, the, is it just a approach at the plate? Like, like, what is it with this Brewers lineup that they were just killing him? I don't know, because I'll watch this <laughs> game. Because, I, because it hasn't always been that way. It always, But it seems like the Reds, as you mentioned, they bring out the best – in the Brewers, and you know they get the like last night they get the uh, Wednesday night they get the five runs in the first two innings. Yellow hits the two run home run. They pack on three more in the second inning. I mean, so Brewer unlike the Brewers because usually we're sitting around for six innings. Please, someone score a run. Let's get something <laughs> on the scoreboard here. Make this interesting. You know, even our pitching staff is doing the job. But um, you know, I I just thought the Brewers starting pitching right now is not only hurt. But it's not really all that good. They're getting a lot of four inning starts, even with Miley. You know, Miley got a four inning start, but they've had other guys come in and, and like a Bryce Wilson pitch three innings and, and do the job out of the bullpen. So I think eventually, Jeff, uh, in this division, the Brewers, their starting pitching is going to get tested. Happy is a clam that they're eight and three at this point. So. But as you know, but you know, you know, you've been around baseball a long time, Jeff. You know, understand that, you know, 162 is a marathon. I, you can't read anything, and it's, it's the great equalizer that whole schedule. So I think at the end of the day, we'll see. And and you know, I when I talk to you guys in the off season, I, I picked the Reds. And some people are asking, "Hey, I thought you picked the Reds to win this division," but they don't look very good. Again, long season, but um, you know, I always say you win more games in April than you can do in September. So or then you, the less games you got to win in September. So exactly. I'll take it so far. But are we really buying into the Pirates' quick start? Oh gosh, they we're did it. They them. did it last year too. Like <laughs> last year, them. last year they were the first place team out of April, and mm -hmm. and then that kind of fell apart on them. I, it's it's intriguing the way this division is rolling right now. Like, and and just like you said, it's a marathon. But if you're a a MLB like national reporter and you're looking at the landscape of the National League you've got a lot of sub 500 teams in the east and a lot of sub 500 teams in the west and the and, and the central is all 500 or better you got to be scratching your head right now because everybody was talking about how bad the central is so sure. as of right now that doesn't look that way I, I i think it will i think it will even out and yeah. there's still plenty of season i mean we haven't even played 10 percent of the season yet so that that's one thing where i don't want to go too crazy in one direction or too crazy in the other but 
these three games just it it it, it triggered me a little bit. It triggered me a little bit. So well, I remember in, in twenty eight or tw- uh, twenty eleven when the Brewers won the division, uh, NL Central in twenty eleven, they swept three game series in Cincinnati, and the Reds looked great. I'm like, oh my god, the Reds are going to win this. Day. And, you know, the Brewers ended up winning the division. So you just you know, you know long way to go. Injuries and all that are going to take. Um, take a fact they're both of our teams here and we're going to have um it's going to be a fun season though it's going to be a fun season oh, i kind of yeah. was i was looking forward to this day i was looking forward to the game on thursday afternoon you know i planned my whole work day sit down at noon our time watch this game and then an hour before the game is like right now and i'm like what you know right yeah i walked up to the gate and found out i was like oh my god that's the worst too me. when you go to a game when you get to the game and it's rained out i mean we I'll had that before you. the roof here I tell you, I was I was ready, was ready for a brisket hoagie, was ready to sit down and watch this, but oh. it was no dice. But I tell you what, I got a question about the Brewers uh, moving forward because we talked a little bit about this during spring training. But what is the stance of the Brewers? Has it changed with the way that they've started? We'll get to that coming up next. Today's show is brought to you in part by. I bought Look, we're all trying to save some money. We're all trying to help out when it comes to shopping. I mean, get yourself some, a little bit of cash back. I is going to help you out with that. Uh, spring when it, when it comes to spring and all this other stuff, it's, it's here. And that means spring cleaning, whether that means stocking up on cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes for new spring clothes, make sure you're using I and you get real cash back with every purchase. I bought is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average I bought a user earns $256 a year. And that's just for shopping on the things that you're already going to buy anyway. It can cover the cost of an entire shopping trip as well if you use Ibotta today. Join over 50 million users and earn the cash back every time you shop from 2,700 brands and retailers, including all your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying and using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back. Remember, use that code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and code LOCKEDONMLB. You know, uh, Chuck, I don't know if you've got your television tuned to Fox Sports or ESPN all day, but uh, you might be like me and you might be kind of tired of all the shouting. Maybe you have to turn down the volume a little bit. I got the perfect solution for you. Go to Locked On Sports Today 24-7. It's a free streaming channel on YouTube and on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's all of the Locked On hosts. Chuck, Myself, Steve, everybody, the Locked On MLB and Locked On NBA, Locked On NFL, Locked On NHL, Locked On NCAA channels. Uh, we're bringing you the biggest stories with the local angles, and we're talking to you about it. We're not shouting at you. So check out Locked On Sports Today 24 7 on YouTube and on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Chuck. So this offseason, we looked at some of the moves that the Brewers made and Steve and myself were like, is a re maybe not a rebuild because they got Jackson Churio coming up. They've got a lot of young guys like South Freelick on the team. They're, they're not like trying to tear down and go to the studs here, but are they retooling a little bit? And then Devin Williams gets hurt and then, and, and all this other stuff. And we're just like, Hmm, what's going on? Has that changed with the good start that they've had? You know, the Brewers never look at it as retooling or rebuilding and all that. Mark Antanasio, the owner, the philosophy there is to try to keep competitive in the division while you bring the younger guys aboard. Now, Garrett Mitchell is another guy. They're starting center fielder when on the injured list. But I thought with Mitchell and then, you know, Devin Williams, as you mentioned, I thought, oh, boy, are they in trouble. And they still might be. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think they look at it as rebuilding or retooling. They feel... The Brewers feel every year they're they're out to win this division, partly because the division, let's face it, is is not great. <laughs> Hasn't yeah. had a lot of playoff wins in the last few years, and the Brewers have contributed to that. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's, you know, they don't they don't look at it where well we're we're building we gotta 
we're going to, uh, we have a five, six year plan. No, Th they tried this once about 20 years ago. And I think that, I think the owner got bored with it. So it might come back to bite them someday, but they have a pretty good farm system. You know, they traded away Corbin Burns, got some more prospects. And you know, DL Hall, who you saw, we're going to see in uh, Baltimore this weekend, the former Oriole. Um, so, I, you know, I think they're not retooling. Now, you guys have gone down that road. Yes. Before. Yeah. And to be honest with you, it's it's gone a lot faster than we thought this time. Yeah. Uh, they, they tore it down, as it were, in 2015. They waited too long on a couple of guys, uh, Roldis Chapman and – uh, Brandon Phillips and guys that they got nothing for whenever mm -hmm. they were moved on from them. And it's still, by the way, it still grinds my gears just a little bit that the Reds got nothing for a role to Chapman. And somehow the Yankees got Glaber Torres and then got a role to Chapman back the next year anyway. Yeah. So that was like a big, uh, yeah, big F you to the Reds, but the way that they were able to move through that, uh, that rebuild uh, was greatly affected in a negative way by the way that they drafted mm -hmm. this time around Nick crawl was like, I'm not waiting too long. I'm trading guys when I should, and I'm getting maximum value for them. And right now, I mean, the Luis Castillo deal and the Tyler Malley deal basically themselves set them up for this, this kind of retooling. I mean, Minnesota traded Christian Encarnacion strand, Spencer steer, and one of the two players that the Reds sent to Cleveland to get Will Benson for Tyler Malley. So that's looking like one of the best trades that the Reds have ever had. And that was able to help them reset so quickly. I mean, Spencer Steer right now is their best hitter. Uh, Christian Encarnacion strands going through a slump, but he'll be up there. I mean, there's a lot of folks, including myself, that picked him to be the team's best hitter for the year. Uh, and, and just the way that the Reds were able to restack the talent through those good trades by not waiting too long on some certain guys. That's really what's put them in this position. Now, mm -hmm. the fun part is like, kind of like you mentioned, you said you, you're seeing some folks that it's like, man, this, this Reds team is like super talented, but there's some folks that are really down on them. It's because Cincinnati is just overstarved. I mean, we are malnourished for good baseball in this city. Like since I have been alive, the Reds have had, I mean, you can count on one hand the number of relevant teams that they have had. You can count on one hand the number of playoff teams that they've had. And you don't even need any fingers at all to count the number of, of series. Well, okay, 1995, they did win the divisional series to move to the championship series. But that was it. That's the last time that they won any playoff series whatsoever. So we are starved. So when you tell us that the future is bright, we're like, all right, the future, the future's now, right? It's now, right? Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> now. Yeah. So that's where there's been a lot of Reds fans kind of get this bravado about them coming into the season. And I'm one of them. I'm not, I'm not immune to this. I'm very bullish on the Reds chances this year. And that's why I do see some other folks that are overreacting to some of the negative performances and thinking, oh, well, see, this is just more of the same, same old Reds. They're not going anywhere. And I don't buy that at all. You know, it's funny when I was a little kid, the big red machine, you could name, even in Milwaukee, you could name every guy at every position, Rose, you know, Dreesen, you could name them, name them all. Um, <clears throat> so it's funny when you say, well, we, they were starved for success and what a great sports town. I always thought Cincinnati was, you know, from the outside, looking in great sports town. And yeah, absolutely. You guys have, you guys had some talent going through there. And I, and I still think as sometimes people could be down in their teams this early in the season, you Reds fans, you long way to go. These guys are going to put you guys and, I, and I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about Jeff and his partner are going to put these guys back on track and push them through the deadline. And uh, who knows, maybe they may, uh, may make a trade or two at the deadline, but I think this is a, it's going to be a great race. I think the Reds are going to be there. I think the Cardinals are going to be there. I like the, I still think the Reds are going to win this division. Now, let me ask you if, if they do continue to, you know, plot along, Let's say we get to June. Would they make a switch with David Bell or is he locked in? I, he's locked in. They signed him to a extension before okay. this year. And I think it's a three year extension. So he's just starting out this new one. Cause he was, this was the final guaranteed year of his contract and they uh, pushed it, pushed it back a little bit more. And, and honestly, if, if anyone ever talks to 
the players about their relationship with David Bell, they all have glowing things, not just positive sure. things, but glowingly positive things to say about him. So there's a behind the scenes element that a lot of fans that kind of discount when they see his press conferences and they see his post game uh, reactions with the media and stuff like that. And he's, he's trying the whole Bill Belichick shtick where it's like, dude, can you speak up just a little bit, like a little <laughs> oh. bit of volume, just anything. Okay. It's like, because he he does the whole well, you know we're going out there compete and you know we got we got a lot of good players out there you know that that other team they got a lot of good players too it's like you don't give me anything but that there's there's more to him that means the eye I don't think that he's in any kind of hot seat. So what you're saying is next time the Reds are in town, turn up my record button next time that we do the post game <laughs> press conference with David Bell. Like <laughs> cup your hands around it, turn the volume up, all the gain, all the way. I don't even know if you can, can you even speak hear. Speak a little that. louder, Skipper. You know, one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Do, maybe sign it to me. I don't know. <laughs> right, so, so, so the fans. So, I mean, the, every major league city's like this. You know, every there's not one manager. I think in entire in professional sports, there's That's not a true. player coach who there's not that fan base that oh, you know, except for right now maybe Pat Murphy in, in Milwaukee. Everybody's. Just loving the fact that he's eight and three. The honeymoon but, phase right now. Yeah, man. the honeymoon phase. Exactly. It. Yeah. I've seen this. I, we've been down this road with several other guys in my lifetime. So I'm, I, I'm gonna let it play out. Where do you guys go from here? Where, where are you guys next? So they're moving into Chicago this weekend, uh, going for the White Sox. And oh, the White Sox. It's it's a fortuitous timing because they're getting Nick Lodolo back on Saturday. I do want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, coming up in the next bit. And also looking forward with the Brewers. I mean, uh, lots going on. This division, even kind of like you said, I mean, you know, the word rebuild, retool, that's not a thing that the Brewers are doing. Mm -hmm. And this is the perfect division to kind of have that mentality because it's going to be so tight. We're going to talk about that coming up next. You know, this time of year is fantastic. Playoffs galore. The NBA, it's in the stretch run. The NHL, I mean, the, all of them are getting ready to move into playoff time. Baseball's in full swing. You got to get over to FanDuel because FanDuel is where you're going to be able to make some cash off your sports knowledge. There's going to be so many different things you can go with as well. And, and I mean, heck, we're talking about Masters Weekend too. There's so many things that you can jump into over at FanDuel. If you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on new users, place a $5 or more winning wager, you get $150 in bonus bets back. Those are the kind of odds you will never get on a $5 bet. Mostly because if you get those odds on a $5 bet, it's not supposed to win. You're probably betting on, at, at that point, me to beat Ellie De La Cruz in a foot race. You're going to get those kind of odds because I ain't going to do it. He's going to beat me so fast. But there's so many different things you can look. You can look at prop bets. You can combine prop bets within single games to increase your payout. Get a single game parlay and make your payout even larger. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on today. And like I said, new users, $5 or more on your first winning wager, you get $150 in bonus bets back. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Are you struggling to close deals? B2B selling is tougher than ever. And that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligent platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers, drive high value revenue, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize, and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date, first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. Thanks as always for making Locked On Brewers and Locked On Reds your first listen every single day. Make sure that you're subscribed uh, to each of our shows. As we move through the season, we're going to be with you every single day as the Reds and the Brewers are fighting in a division that is so tightly contested and, and very jam-packed that it's, it's, it's weekend series like the Reds have with the White Sox. 
that the Reds really need to take advantage of. The White Sox are hurt. Eloy Jimenez, out. Luis Robert, out. Um, Yuan Mancata, out. I think Andrew Vaughn is the only name that I actually know now on the White Sox lineup, and I'm not really even sure who's pitching for them in this series. It might see Michael Kopech, might see Garrett Crochet, but other than that, this is going to be a very interesting series because Nick Lodolo returns on Saturday, and to get this rotation back to full strength is going to be a big thing for them, and as the Brewers, the Brewers are moving into the weekend, what do they got coming up? Well, we got to go to Baltimore. Uh, the Brewers are in Baltimore. Got Freddie Peralta, who was supposed to start against uh, Thursday against the, the Reds. So he gets pushed back, and he'll start Friday. Uh, so they have these three games with the Orioles, and the Orioles are going to be obviously contender. Uh, I think they're off their 7-4 and four start in the American League East. So, um, And then they come home. The Brewers do. We got the Padres next week to start a little bit of homestand. A lot of road games to start off the, the season here, end of March, into April and all that. So... But I mean, you're, you guys going in the White Sox Park, Comiskey Park, or whatever they're calling it these days. Um, yeah, the White Sox are just brutal, man. Uh, they're they're bad. You got that, that's a series. You know, you got to. I mean, baseball, anything can happen. But you know, you got you got to look at a series like that and say you got to go in there and win two or three. Yeah, this weekend is a big opportunity for the Reds to kind of to kind of get right here. And I know that you had mentioned that you know you're not really thinking that your your prediction is changing on the NL central, I definitely still believe that you could definitely, you could see all five teams with let's say 73 or more wins, but I don't even think that the guy, the team that wins this division gets to 90. Like, I think if you get to 88, I think you got it. Yeah. I mean, if it stays this way, you know, once these teams start facing each other in the divisional play and, and start knocking some heads and all that, you know, things are going to change a little bit, but you know, I just, I think, the goal, I think, for at least Milwaukee is not only winning the division, but bust the door down. They haven't won a playoff series since 2018 when they beat Colorado in a first-round playoff series. So fans are anxious. You know, they won 92 games last year. It's not about just winning the division. Sure, you got to win the division. You got to walk first before you can do anything else. But uh, I think it's more than that. I mean, fans, you know, you talk about starved fans. Um, fans here are starved for... Uh, a playoff victory, go into the World Series, one World Series in 54 years, one of the more futile professional sports teams in the country. So hopefully, you know, we can bust the door down finally and, and get at least the, get to the playoffs. First of all, win a couple of playoff series. But again, I think the bar is set pretty high because fans are just tired of, you know, getting to the postseason and then falling flat on their face. It's true. And and I think of the Brewers as a really well run organization over the last like decade, decade and a half. It feels like they've drafted well, they developed well, they've they've had a good churn of talent. I mean, you go through all the different names that have been in the Brewers lineup, on the Brewers rotation, in the Brewers bullpen, and it seems like everything has kind of been put together, but you're right, it's it hasn't quite equated to that October success. Mm -hmm. And I think with you guys, you know, I've, I've told you guys before about uh, Dela Cruz and I think the world of him, I think Spencer, Spencer's off to a good start. Yeah. Uh, you know, he is, I mean, coming into this series, he, you know, he, I thought I, I said in one of my podcasts this past week and I said, you know, you gotta, this guy's going to be around for a little bit. He looks to be something special too. He's, he's kind of in the mold of Joey Votto. He's a quiet slugger, going to get up there, get his hits, have good at bats. He's mm -hmm. got great plate discipline, but he doesn't, he doesn't like to talk a whole lot. Like I remember early on this season, he had a huge home run to, to put them ahead late in a game. And I'm trying to remember against who, but um, I think it was the first series there against the nationals, but he had a late home run to put him ahead. And as he was rounding first, he kind of like pumped his fist and he smiled and uh, in his post game presser, he was just like, "Yeah, I kind of let loose there." It's like, you think? <laughs> Party on. some other guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whew, calm down, man. <laughs> you know, like, but it's, well, today, it's just it's fun. Today, to you almost don't want to do that because you know the, the the next time you're up the plate, these pitchers got such attitudes and they get so easily offended that probably he didn't. Spencer probably didn't want to get one knocked in the head the next time he faced that pitcher. You know, <laughs> it's, it's you know what I'm saying? It's true. <laughs> It's true. The the way like everybody everybody has their their emotions on their sleeves. No matter sure. if you're the hitter or the pitcher, and that you know that that that's how things get shown through. But it's it's crazy too. And the, and one thing before we leave, um, 
just I just kind of want to get your raw reaction to this because we mentioned earlier, you know, there's Reds fans that are a little bit negative and kind of worrying about some stuff. And you had mentioned William Contreras' his, his, uh, quote and his meeting that he called with the team and stuff like this. Chuck, before the series started with Milwaukee, there were Reds fans that wanted Ellie De La Cruz to be sent down to Louisville for a message to be sent to him because he was struggling. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't ever do that. Don't ever <laughs> send him. I'll tell you what, send him, send him. Don't send him down. Send him up here. Cause we'll take him. We'll find a spot. I'll forget Christian Yelich ever even existed. You could take all our guys and we'll start over from ground zero just to have De La Cruz, man. No, the, same thing here, Jeff, you know, with uh, Freelick, he's our hot shot, you know, young right. guy. He's not De La Cruz obviously, but he's M- Milwaukee's version of a, you know, hot shot prospect. And same with him. He got off to a rough start. Oh, move him down in the order. Do this, do that. And then Monday he comes out and has three hits. Um, or was it Tuesday? One of the days he had three hits. Tuesday, I think it was. So, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, when the Field outfield for Brewers just produced. Um, but so, yeah, no. And these young guys, they're going to go through slumps. They're going to go through slumps during the season. De La Cruz, Freelick, they're all going to, you know, the guy just got called up from in Baltimore, went over for 4 on, on Wednesday night. It's going to be tough. But you know what? You got to have patience. Yelich said it in the spring training, like for Jackson Churio, who's the Brewers, actually, their number one prospect. Um, they said, yeah, just let him out there. Let him play. Let him make his snakes. Coach him up. And the same thing with Dela Cruz. Just let him go out there. Let him do his thing. Coach him up. And, um, you know, the guy's got amazing talent. I mean, I don't have to tell you that. He's got an amazing talent. He's got um, world-class talent that is going to be fun just to enjoy it. Enjoy enjoy watching a guy like that because he's a superstar, a budding superstar. Here's your mic. That's <laughs> that's how we're going to end today's crossover. Thanks, everybody, so much for checking out the Lockdown Brewers, Lockdown Reds crossover. Make sure that you are subscribed to our shows. We got everything coming for you all season long. We're going to be dialed in to our teams because we are Lockdown Reds and Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every single day.